Um, but yeah, Fury is going to come up in the next part of our talk, actually, because he's been talked about as a potential future opponent um, for Zhile Zhang, of course. Uh, interesting one. But then we saw Eddie Hearn make some comments. I don't know if it was yesterday or today. He's been out in Florida, of course. And he said that uh, Zhang is now a possibility for Anthony Joshua if they can't make the long discussed Deontay Wilder fight. So we're going to have to see what pans out there. Um, but yeah, as we said there, Fury versus Zhang or Joshua goes to China. Because Eddie Hearn said, of course we go to China. We'll go wherever makes the most money. And given Zhang a homecoming fight, he's obviously a national hero after his own prowess in the Olympics, plus what he's done as a pro. Hugely populous nation. Um, you know, starved in some senses of top-level, higher-level sport. Um, you've got to imagine it will do huge figures, both TV figures there and money through the turnstiles, uh, you know, why not? Why not go out to China? I can't see Tyson Fury doing it, if I'm honest. I think if it, if there's a Fury fight, it'll be in the Middle East or it'll be here in the UK. But if Joshua and Hearn, at least on his behalf, have stated he's willing to go out there, interesting stuff. What, what would you prefer to see, Danny? Uh, Zhang against Joshua or Zhang against Fury? Oh, I don't know. I would... Just because it's maybe more likely to be in China, as you say, the idea of Zhang getting his homecoming... Uh, at the bird's nest potentially holds saying close to a hundred thousand i mean that would be a serious spectacle um I, I don't see it happening despite what eddie said that they would happily make the fight and this and that and i would hate to ever accuse eddie hearn of not really telling the truth but i just think that's a really really tough fight from the joshua at the stage of his career he's in and i mean don't want to turn this into an anthony joshua episode <laughs> but the sort of mentalities and it's been sort of done to death um can't see that happening. Uh, happening. Uh, Zhang seem and his team seem to be very keen on the Tyson Fury fight. I mean, mm. it was telling that even though he's WBO interim champion and soon to be your six mandatory, Fury is the only name coming out of his mouth. Uh, potentially could happen. I mean, both under the Queensbury banner now. I mean, Frank Warren's turned <laughs> turned from Joe Joyce's promoter to Zilai Zhang's promoter very quickly over the past couple of days, so I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah, Ian Watson says, Zhang is very fluid and naturally quick with excellent technique. This has been developed over the years in the amateurs. And I think that's an important point because I noted perhaps, and someone else noted in the chat, that perhaps Joyce stayed amateur for too long. And that's embedded some bad habits or, or at least habits not suitable for the pro game. But then on the flip side, Zhang has honed some of his uh, techniques that he's needed in the pro side of the sport as a long time world class amateur. Um, Dell, he's managed to do two in a row here, so well done. I love people who can learn from their errors. Says a lot of what Frank Warren has been saying for months now seems to be coming to fruition. He's been telling everyone Wilder AJ isn't happening, no test for Ben, but Hearn and Co continue to blag us. Then he says, oh, maybe we take the Zhang option for AJ. I mean, a couple of points on that. I would say that there's every chance that Zhang is being mentioned, particularly in China, where it is a very lucrative um, option by Eddie Hearn, because then it puts a little bit more pressure on Wilder and the people working with him to make the Joshua fight. You know, I think there's, that's still their number one priority. Um, he said that Wilder's the more dangerous fight, but Zhang is still dangerous. I would probably go along with that, certainly for Joshua's style. Um, I think Joshua stylistically doesn't match up too badly with Zhang. I think against Wilder, it's, it's a very tough ask. So I think there's a little bit of kind of negotiating ploy there and that, you know, we've got this other option. It's out in China. We can make loads of money. He's not quite as scary as you are, but, you know, we'd be willing to take it. I'm slipping into Eddie Hearn voice here, but <laughs> we'd be willing to take it if, you know, the Wilder fight can't be made. And that puts a bit more pressure on Wilder and his team to, you know, sort things out, whatever the hurdles are, and overcome them. And on the Frank Warren side, you know, Daniel Dubois was his big hope. Um, he still is, perhaps, you know, he's still quite young. He fought Joyce in a fight they fully expected Dubois to win, but they had both under contract. Joyce came through, then they got behind Joyce, got Zhang under contract after the first, um, or co-promotional deal with Zhang after the first uh, fight with Joyce. And now they can move on with Joyce and, and uh, sorry, move on with Zhang. And that's presumably an easy-ish fight to make with Tyson Fury as they both work in with Frank Warren anyway. Do you think there was anything, Danny, in the um, Joe Joyce rematch from Zhang that will not scare, but will will unsettle Tyson Fury, that he'll be concerned about? Um, I'm not too sure. I mean, Tyson, I know a lot of people think he's scared of Usyk. I think it's just more he, he wants to make as much money as possible. And the Ngannou thing was sort of presented in his lap. And 
he, he's took that whilst it's there. Zhang, he'll be well aware, is a difficult fight. I mean, Fury is a bit of a historian of boxing. He'll be well aware of the, the challenges Zhang poses. Um, you would still make Fury a fairly sizable favourite. Although saying that, like if, if Wilder is able to land, and obviously Wilder's explosive and probably is, is more one-punch power than Zhang, I think that's fair to say. Zhang's a lot better technically. He's got a lot more means of landing his power. He's better at setting up shots. And if Wilder can you knock you down four times in the space of three fights, like it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Zhang will be able to catch him as well. So I don't think it's a fight Fury will be running scared from, but I, I doubt he would be taking it as lackadaisically as he did Derek Chisora, for example. Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, Cardiac Kip says, not a Fury fan, but he would box the shit out of Zhang. Shit out of Zhang is very hard to say. I didn't realise until I started reading it. Um, yeah, I agree. Boxing 24-7 says Zhang dangerous with both hands. Fury wouldn't be able to use lateral movement as well as he does with one-handed fighters. Yeah, that's an interesting point. But I think Zhang is a bit slow of foot in comparison to Fury. And also perhaps Wilder as well. Wilder's not got the best footwork, but he's quite quick on his feet. You know, he's quite nimble. Um, and I'm not sure. And so is Fury, of course, um, moving in both directions. And, and Fury can obviously switch hit as well. Zhang's a dangerous southpaw, but Fury can go southpaw as well if he chooses. I don't know if that'd be a wise idea against a gifted natural left-hander in Zhile Zhang. Um, but I, watching it and seeing some of the mistakes Joyce made, I did kind of think I could see Fury enjoying this sort of fight. I could see him outboxing Zhang and I could see him picking him off as he comes in, forcing him to lead off so he could counter. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be without its dangers, of course, as Boxing 24-7 underlines. Zhang can hit hard with both hands, but I would fancy Fury quite strongly in that fight. Whereas AJ, you know, I, I think that's more of a 50-50. That's more of a pick em. Well, What if you had to pick right now, Danny? Who would you go for in both of those fights? So Zhang against Fury and against AJ? I would favour Fury, first of all. Don't get it twisted. But the only thing, it's, it's been a long time since we've seen Fury sort of get up on his heels and go on the back foot. Um, there's no guarantees he'd be able to do that for 12 rounds. Um, I still think he could potentially beat Zhang Um you know, standing and having it with him. I think he would have a much better gas tank than, than Zhang. Fury's got exceptional levels of fitness and I, I still would favour him. I've got to be honest, I would favour Zhang to stop Anthony Joshua in the first half of the fight if that happened now. I mean, that Hellenius fight, the first three, four rounds, he was getting tagged and ended up busted up by Hellenius who, with no disrespect, is a faded former European level fighter who got knocked out by Wilder in a round. Zhang, he's a southpaw with similar dimensions in terms of height and reach to Hellenius. He hits a lot harder. He's got a lot faster hands. I, I would think Anthony Joshua would really struggle against Eli Zhang. And yeah, I would have Zhang 60%, 70%. I would be favouring him, I think. And to do it in the first half of the fight as well. Yeah. Has Joshua lost in the first half of the fight before? Like, when did he lose against Ruiz? No, that was what? Was it 8-9 by the time it got waved off? Wow. Wow. So you're predicting history will be made and not the type of history that Anthony Joshua would like. No. Wow. So Dell's, uh, Dell, if you, if you uh, contribute any more to the live chat, we might have you in as the next replacement co-host. No <laughs> offence to Danny, he's doing a fine job. Um, but he says, I'm not too fussed about the Fury fight, but don't get the hate being thrown his way. He's getting 50 mil plus for Ngannou, presumably. No mandatories. All fighters say he needs to secure our future because time is limited, so people need to get off his back as he will fight again in January anyway as all his mandatories will be called. Well, he's only got one mandatory to be called, hasn't he? He's only the WBC champion, so there's not all his mandatories. But, yeah, I mean, hopefully he will fight soon after Ngannou in an actual boxing match in the defence of his titles. I know the WBC are considering the mandatory situation in November, um, so we hope they find someone for him. I'm sure a lot of people would love a crack at the famous green belt. Um, I think the WBC have been too lenient so far. Maybe lenient's not the right word. Maybe they've just struggled with the bureaucracy side and creating a mandatory challenger or elevating a mandatory challenger. Um, but yeah, I mean, we want to see Fury in proper action. And Zhang, if they can't make the Usyk undisputed fight, I think Zhang's as good a challenge as any. any, any who, who else would you like to see Zhang fight, Danny, if it's not going to be Fury or AJ? What would be a good next fight for him? Is it just wait for Usyk? 
I mean, in terms of if we're living in sort of fantasy land here, the Wilder fight's a really intriguing fight. You've got mm -hmm. two of the, the biggest punchers in the division, probably the two biggest, in my opinion, um, certainly that have established themselves at that sort of level. Um, Zhang, obviously, superior technically, better defence, southpaw, but Wilder, you know, can turn his lights off at any time. That's a fight I would love to see. Uh, aside from that, in terms of like a realistic option, the winner of that Wallen Garcia fight potentially, if he does have to win it out, that's a, an interesting fight. There's two good heavyweights fighting this weekend, actually. Um, Queensbury don't really have much else for them, so you would have to be drafting an, an international opponent, I would think. But he'll be well aware of what's happened to Joe Joyce and giving him a shot, and they'll be very cautious to learn from Joyce, Joyce's mistakes. So I think they'll be very careful if it is anyone else other than a sort of mega fight.